I'm concerned about the way the European Union is increasingly operating like a free market across Europe, tearing up the social chapter, damaging working class and workers' interests across Europe, hiding tax evasion in Luxembourg and other places, and secretly negotiating so a transatlantic... Can I finish? Yeah. <laughs> secretly negotiating a transatlantic trade and investment partnership. I think we as a party need to be making strong demands of defending and expanding the social chapter, defending and expanding workers' rights across Europe, and chasing down these uh, approved tax havens that exist by the European Union all across Europe, and asking some serious questions about the way they've treated the people of Greece and other countries by their imposition of austerity measures on them. Right. Okay. Well, Prime Minister David Cameron has said that the EU imposes too many restrictions on British lawmakers. Critics say that the UK will be forced to abandon its pound currency and adopt the euro currency, which has historically been the weaker of the two. Adoption of the euro is expected of all EU countries by the year 2020, but many are worried that the euro is not only unstable, but able to be influenced by weaker countries like Greece. Some conservative groups feel like Europe is manipulating the British government, and that policymakers have lost control over trade, human rights, and migration. EU law is supreme over UK law, meaning that lawmakers in the British House of Commons are technically beholden to those in the European Parliament in Brussels. Are the British people, when they vote in a general election, to be able to change the policies of the government that has previously been there? And it is already a fact that whatever government is in power, our agricultural policy is now controlled from Brussels, our trade policy is controlled from Brussels, our industrial policy is controlled from Brussels. It is a democratic and not a nationalistic argument. those wars needs to be a vote to remaining in the European Union. We fought those wars so that we and the rest of Europe could be independent, democratic and free. And what is happening to us over decades using the argument about trade is we are losing our independence, we are losing our democracy and being become part of a club to which increasingly people feel angry and resentful. We see the far right and the far left growing in European politics. We see violence on the streets of Athens now on a regular basis. We're headed to a bad place and I want to live in a Europe of democratic nation states cooperating and trading together and if we vote for Brexit we'll give the example to the rest of the continent too. Now the numbers of lost children have multiplied and Interpol has warned in January of this year 10,000 children have vanished. 5,000 have disappeared in Italy alone. A thousand are unaccounted for in Sweden. Europol's chief of staff said, we just don't know where they are, what they're doing, or whom they are with. Angela Merkel and other open border fanatics told the world all could come. The sex traffickers, the men who supply the paedophiles, have accepted that invitation. This is a sacrifice of the children for European ideology, and this parliament does nothing. But it's what happened, I think, in Cologne, where we saw the mob. Up to a thousand young males in the street sexually assaulting and harassing women. It is, I think in many ways, one of the most disgraceful public order events that we've seen in modern day Europe. And yet there was an attempt by the police and the press to cover it all up. And even the suggestion from some German politicians that German young women should change their dress and their mode of behaviour in the street, which I thought was a total insult. We would have the capacity to trade freely with all of the countries in the European Union, and it wouldn't be in their interests to erect barriers, because, as has been pointed out repeatedly, there is a trade deficit that we have with the European Union. But we sell be, more to them. It would be perfectly in the Germans' interest to say, we don't like competition from the City of London. We don't like competition. Uh, may the, maybe the French banks would say, they say it now, but you would have no legal right of redress. Well, we absolutely would have the opportunity to say to their countries, um, uh, and to their peoples, why would you want to have your government deliberately erect barriers that would mean that you would lose jobs, lose investment and lose income?
stay in the EU? No. Is it because of the migration situation? Um, that doesn't help. Do you think it has been a benefit so far to be in the EU? No. I think we should get a lot of powers back, back to Britain, away from Brussels. Do you think David Cameron will come back with a package that may, may be enticing and encourage you to stay? No. And Mr Cameron's going to conclude his renegotiation. I've no doubt there'll be a compromise on the fairly minor issue of migrant benefits. I've no doubt that he will come back from that summit with a few promissory notes for the future about Britain's relationship. But what he's not going to be talking about is our ability to get back control of our borders. And the British people know that those young men in Cologne, in a few years' time, will have EU passports and be free to come to Britain. And just to give you an idea of how big the sea change has been, a Daily Telegraph commentator, Alison Pearson, who had said she was undecided on Brexit, she didn't have enough information, wrote this the other day. She said, after Cologne, the EU referendum is about nothing less than the safety and security of British women. We, the Euro clueless, need to woman up and vote for the right of our daughters and granddaughters to live as they choose and to smile in the street. No more Mrs. Don't Know. Let's get the hell out. I hope 2016 is our year of deliverance. We'll face that with what the Greeks are facing today. Greek unemployment at nearly 25%. Youth unemployment at 52%. The numbers of Greek young people who have left their country at 200,000. Suicides since the crash at 6,000 people. The money spent on austerity over 40 billion euros. And the slow knife and dagger of the EU's austerity programme slice itself into the heart of the Greek people. And whilst there are members here from Greece of the EPP and the socialists who spout solidarity, who believe that they won't care for those Greek people, well, yes, it's fine for you with your champagne lifestyles, but bear that in mind to the families who have to suffer the deaths of their 6,000 members of their families who've committed suicide. Significant truth in that argument. Well, the Prime Minister argues that Britain needs to be part of the European Union to push the project for peace. Had the United Kingdom not been independent of Europe twice in the 20th century, we would have not had the ability to stop things going wrong in Europe. And the idea that now we have to, in a sense, supersede NATO with a new European army with joint control because we fear Russia uh, suggests to me that the EU is becoming militarised with an expanding foreign policy and we should be deeply nervous of that. Fleckenstein report on Albania looks at their progress towards achieving the criteria that will eventually allow them to join the EU and whilst ongoing reform in Albania is obviously welcome I am concerned about what you said about that country Commissioner I mean that really was a uh, a tale of woe and they've obviously got a very long way to go before they become EU members but of course once they are EU members it will draw Albania into the Schengen area already notorious for facilitating organized crime and human trafficking the UK has a GDP per capita approximately 10 times that of Albania a minimum wage level and social benefit structure that will draw Albanians to Britain like an electromagnet if I was an honest young man in Albania today, I would take English lessons and save up for a train ticket to London and pray that the Brits vote to remain in the club on the 23rd of June. If I was a criminal in Albania today, I would view EU membership as a passport to paradise. Whilst the EU sits in judgment on Albania, it presides over appalling problems within its own jurisdiction, Getting its own financial account satisfactorily signed off would be a good start and a good example to Albania. The lesson just never seems to be learned that making the EU bigger doesn't make the EU better.